Hey Vera City, welcome back to the channel. It's a girl Vera Moore, and I'm back with another reaction video. Today, guys, I'm going to be reacting to Chandis Owens. Uh, if you haven't seen any of my reaction to our videos, hit the link above. Uh, I have a whole playlist on Chandis, and this is Candace Owens, Touches Woke Professor on Dr. Phil. My first time checking this out, and I'm super excited to get right into the video. But before we get started, we have some amazing people watching us for the first time. If you are new here, hello, I'm Vera. I do reaction videos. If you do something that you love, why not join Vera City? Hit the subscribe button below, turn on the post notification bell, so that you can always be the first person to know whenever a new video drops. And that's guys. Let's go. You know, I'm of mixed background. What am I supposed to mark on an application? Am I supposed to mark multiple boxes? And plus, mark if you are black. painting people yeah, as an oppressor, if you're white, that's and a then terrible thing to tell someone that Well, it's the truth because you believe in affirmative action. So I said, mark black. If you're then, a mixed student, I, I, I'm in a, I'm an interracial relationship, so I can speak to this. I have a son that's half white and a son that's half black and a daughter that's half white and half black. Okay. They're going to mark black because I know that there are people like you at the universities who will say, well, because this person is black, I'm just going to let them in. No, That's they're going to mark black because they're black. Well, they're <laughs> half black and half white. They're, 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 they're both, right? So it is true. You overlook yes, interracial students. Right, so you I'm overlook, <laughs> you overlook <laughs> interracial students. But so why? what do you mean? Why are you saying, That's, yeah, they're going to mark black because they're black? I socialize in our society. So the hmm. answer is, if you, you can't, I mean, you can mark both. Can you mark both? I don't know if you can. Yes. What are you going to look at that applicant as a little bit less because they're half white? How do you guys figure that out? How they look at it is, again, holistically, holistically uh, across a number of different factors. I love me a buzzword. Holistically and racial consciousness. Oh, yeah. Reverse discrimination. A it's buzzword. not reverse discrimination. It's just discrimination. discrimination. <laughs> it's just racism if you're judging people on the basis of their skin color. I don't know why this is so difficult. I mean, you have to go to through an extraordinary amount of school. You ha almost have to have a PhD to not be able to see this. The amount of mental gymnastics this professor demonstrates just to avoid giving a straight up answer is amazing. And it makes it real easy to spot when you're full of crap and have absolutely no backbone in your talking points. I want to welcome conservative author and TV host Danielle D'Souza Gill and distinguished professor of education at San Diego State University, Dr. Luke Wood. So welcome to both of you. Um, now, oh boy, let me start with you. Is it possible for white people to be discriminated against because they are the majority, and discrimination involves power. Is it possible? Absolutely. It, it is unequivocally possible. It happens all the time. This actually happens not only in specific instances, but this happens in a systemic way on our most elite college campuses. Wow. And I would also say that this is happening um, not just in education, but in the workplace. Well, is it justified, though? Because if, if there has been disparity and if there has been discrimination, if there have been uh, minorities that have been excluded for years and years and years and years, is this the way to start to bring some balance and diversity back to those universities and workplaces? Absolutely not. Affirmative action has been going on for over 50 years, so this has been happening for a long time. And even now, we've actually seen that it's gotten worse in the sense that race relations are so poisonous. And many people on college campuses um, actually feel like because of all of this that's happening, they feel like they're being pitted against each other. Doctor, what do you think? Well, I think um, I would very respectfully disagree. Um, I certainly don't think that uh, white people are disadvantaged in college admissions. In fact, I would say it's the exact opposite, which is why there are policies and practices in place now to try to alleviate the historical burden. Mm. It's like um, if you ever played Monopoly before, right? Imagine like you have a person who's playing Monopoly and they get to go around multiple times, right? And then like halfway through the game, someone gets to enter into the game. And then because they get a turn, right, then the accusation is, well, somehow that game is unfair. Y'all, I didn't know that Steph Curry left the basketball court to become a race hustling professor. Since when? <laughs> All seriousness, he's just referring to white people as a monopoly, as we have this overbearing control and dominance in society still in 2023. But in every level of society, you can see a black person, very wealthy, very successful, very influential. So where's the monopoly? Because if you're white in today's day and age, if you say anything, Anything at all, even if it's completely accurate, based in fact, and you give any constructive criticism, anything towards a black person, person of color, 
you're deemed racist. You're deemed a bigot. You're deemed as, as you know, you, you, you view the world as, as you own it. You're above people. But this pinning people against each other, they keep promoting it because it sells one. It makes them money and they can divide and conquer and push these narratives. Why are you judging people based on how they look and not, you know, their level of effort, their level of sacrifice and grind and, you know, their qualifications? Why is that not what's being discussed? I'm just just curious, just asking for a friend. Uh, the kind of accusation, what we'd say is reverse racism, uh, we really just view it as what we call race lighting. Race lighting is what happens when gaslighting is racial. And essentially, if you look historically, colleges and universities have prioritized admissions for students who are white. Why is that? When you admit a student, it's oftentimes based upon your grades, high school grades, and your test scores, ACT and SAT, which are being phased out due to COVID-19. But if you think about it, the SAT and ACT have historically measured access to resources, the neighborhood that you grow up in, it is not a measure of a student's drive, a student's motivation, it is really a measure of their access. And ultimately we know that when things measure access, they really measure um, white privilege. I'm just wondering, if there's so much white privilege and you're a black man, you're a doctor, you're successful as far as education is concerned, Where's the privilege? Why didn't you get held down? Why, why did, how did you get the access, but other black folks can't have the same access and the same level of discipline and, and consistency and, and the hard work and effort that you had to sacrifice to get to the level that which you're at? Props to you. That's awesome. That's a beautiful thing. But when you get to that level, why not uplift society? Why keep pinning and pointing fingers and, and trying to oppress them? Why not use that, that influence and that power that you have to give people that access, to go out and teach people, to not just tell them that, no, you can't do it or somebody's out to get you based on how you look. Why not tell them that, no, 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 you can do exactly what that little white boy, white girl, Asian boy, Asian girl, anybody can do if you're willing to sacrifice some sleep and grind harder than the next person and, and discipline yourself to achieve those grades that get you into those Ivy League schools then you can have it just like them. It, you, you shouldn't be admitted based on how you look just to, you know, level out the playing field. No, 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 no. Life ain't fair. Life is not all sunshine and roses. You should get where you get based on being qualified, based on having worked harder than the other people going for that same role. School, workforce, athletics, anything in this world, it shouldn't just be handed out. It should be earned. Candace, are we compromising standards yes. if we do that because we haven't fixed the problem down the line? That's correct. It is the problem policies are harmful also to the people that they purport to help. Um, and we have all of the evidence there to look at. Uh, when you artificially place a black American into a school in which they do not belong based on their knowledge, it doesn't mean that they go on to get A's. In fact, there was a black adjunct professor, you guys have definitely heard of him, Dr. Thomas Sowell, uh, who was teaching at Cornell University and he found the that great Thomas the Sowell. majority of the black American students that were there were on academic probation. Now, these students were some of the smartest in the nation, but because they were artificially placed amongst their peers at Cornell University, they were failing on academic probation. These policies have never helped black Americans. It's just basically policies that are put in place to make people feel good, right? I feel like I'm doing something when in fact I'm actually creating harm. You either know the answers or you don't. When you say, hey, we have black students at a particular school who aren't performing at that school as well, the immediate assumption that you're making is, well, maybe it's because they're not smart enough, they're, they're not good enough, or they don't belong here. Whereas it could be about the experience that they're having at that institution. Professors who believe that they're not intelligent enough, that they don't have the capability to do the work, that they see them as criminals, deviants, dangerous, up to no good, or they talk about them with the they statements. They're lazy. They don't care. They don't really belong here. Uh, you're, they're you're only here for the financial aid. I'm giving you actual facts. No, right? I'm giving so you can, actual facts based upon extensive research. We can fantasize. You can say, well, maybe they just don't feel good. Um, but that's not the case. I mean, I went, I went to university. I did not feel good, right? I, I didn't pull the best grades in high school, probably got into a better university than I should have gotten into based on my performance in high school. It wasn't because of my feelings. It's because I wasn't focused on it. And that we're talking about a cultural problem, what's going on back at home, as was in my circumstance. And none of that is because of institutionalized policy. Um, it almost seems like you guys refuse to accept that you know black students aren't performing well you feel like you have to have this burden of responsibility when in fact if you actually wanted to help you would look at the facts re-examine the fact that it's not helping anybody it's not helping black americans to artificially place them into universities and you'd make effective change but you're making the assumption that black students are academically inferior and they're not no, you some are of our most actually, that's, brilliant that's, that's students the, that's that we the have. basic no 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 that you are making the assumption that they are inferior you just said that they don't belong there. policies <laughs> I'm talking about the students that are based on the policies that you are defending right now, 
saying that we should have these policies that let them into these universities, not based on their skill set, but based on the color of their skin. So you are assuming that they are inferior. Comedian Tyler Fisher claims he has been turned down by three agencies because they said they just weren't looking for white men to book at this time. Tyler, thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank you. I do I identify as a Latino female now, so <laughs> just adjust my pronouns. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I, I've been in the entertainment business for 17 years. And I, I think what we're not talking about is children right now. Thank God I had about five years where this was not happening, where race was not pounded over your head. Hmm. <laughs> this is Professor destroying Lickham people's says. lives. Yeah. You know, the manager that told me, I can't work with you because you're white, he was he was a pawn, you know? And so it's so sad because I feel so bad for kids who won't have that chance. They're going to go, oh, I'm told I'm white, so I'm not going to go for it. You know, what would you say to a five-year-old or a six-year-old, no matter what their race is? Should you, like, what would you, what would you actually tell them? You know, should you give your job up? And let me ask you directly, do you think it was justified for me to be told we can't represent you you don't have the chance to now compete for jobs because you're white. Yes or no? Was that okay or was that not okay? I think that what is described yes by no. you. Don't give me your little well, no, like, let me bubble finish. wrap. What, yes what is described no. by you, Straight someone Come telling on. you that you can't get, get that job because you're white does not sound right to me. Just give us a straight answer. Yes or no, right or wrong. Not does it sound wrong, is it right or wrong? It's real simple. I'm, I'm just curious how this man is a doctor, a professor in charge of education, schooling other kids on what it takes to you know succeed in, in the world in whatever field that he teaches in, education, that's, it's a broad spectrum, but, but you can't comprehend this basic level kindergarten question yes or no is it right or wrong to judge somebody and and hold them down based on how they look which is out of their control come on now like th this is it they, they keep talking about it that's why it keeps being brought up in headlines and it's been such a divisive issue stop focusing on race stop talking about race it doesn't matter we're not in the 60s anymore not in the 1800s it's over leave it in the past live for today uplift everybody be good to your neighbor love them as you love yourself get back to truth in reality not all these falsehoods and just so we're clear this uh people of color lingo is straight up garbage um hello folks is white not a color also or blanco for my spanish speaking Speaking folks out there are white folks not considered human beings as well because last time I checked all of us black brown yellow it doesn't matter what color you are we're all human beings created in God's image as man or woman we all bleed the same exact color red we all got the same ancestry that started with Adam and Eve I did a show the other day and they said are you doing the next show and I said yeah the guy said I didn't know you were gay he said this is a gays only show hmm and so wow Hey, that's why Hollywood sucks right now, by the way, <laughs> because they're not hiring based on talent. What do we do about heart surgeons, airplane pilots? Like, how far do we want to go with this? Do you want the best heart surgeon or do you want somebody who you think may have had it bad as a kid or maybe their great, great grandfather? I mean, this is hmm. it's ridiculous. I think it's important yeah. <clears throat> to state how affirmative action actually harms everybody involved. So when you put a black student on a campus or put them in a job and you've given them, uh, you know, preferential treatment in order for them to be there, you've actually robbed them of knowing they've gotten an opportunity based on their own merit. So they're questioning themselves and their place in the environment. And for all the non uh, people of color who are surrounding them, they now get to look at any person of color and go, I don't know whether or not you got this job based on merit or based on preferential treatment. And I know this to be true because I'm a biracial woman who has those thoughts now because of the culture that we're living in. Thank God for people like this that refuse to back down to these falsehoods and these woke justice warriors, these fake ideologies that we can't keep living by. It's a deep, dark slope that leads to depression, anxiety, not a reality based on who's actually earned their right to have that position, who's actually the best at whatever that role may be, but something that's completely based out of their control, how they look or what they identify as that day. And this is ridiculous. And at the same time, I pray for college professors like this doctor right here that 
that how they talk down to everyone like they're God's gift to society just because they have a piece of paper that says I spent this much getting in debt to, to earn this piece of paper and now I'm in charge of education but I actually have no common sense no logical thinking skills or maybe I do but I'm putting on this this mask to you know be inclusive because I want to still get that paycheck but I'm pushing everybody in the wrong direction I'm leading them astray and not in reality not based on the gifts that God has given them everybody has a gift but you have to sculpt that you have to work at that you have to grind and if you want to get a position and a level of success in life you have to earn that you can't just get handed that we can't keep handing out 70th place trophies for uh lackluster performance and celebrating mediocrity it's a huge reason that we're in this cluster dump of chaos in the first place people these days and parents and teachers they're like oh honey no no don't cry it's okay that you're failing it's okay that you didn't put it in any effort studying you didn't work out this way or that way the, the next man or woman they sacrificed everything to, to get this level to get this passing a to to succeed but no, you didn't. It's okay. Here, go go celebrate. Here's a here's a full ride scholarship to an Ivy League school. And oh, son, it's okay. Oh, you you don't feel like a boy today. You want you feel like a woman. Oh, go ahead, go dominate those little girls in sports. Go completely take advantage of of your masculinity and, and overbearing genetic gifts on women that were born women, but you feel like a woman that day. So we'll, we'll go along with it. Well, you're just so gifted. You're so special. Go ahead. Go, go dominate. Get woman of the year trophy, son. That, that's okay. It's okay. Huh? What? Uh, since when? When has that ever been a wise decision for the greater good of humanity? Since when is lying good for students and schools and a successful society in the long run? Then that kid then goes on and fails out of the university, has suicidal thoughts if they, you know, identified as this and later push hormones on themselves and and fall into this this whirlwind of, of falsehoods. And it, nobody tells them what the truth is. So they keep on thinking that they could be a woman. They start chopping things off. Then they have this this suicidal thought, this this mental depravity because they were never taught accountability. They were never relayed truth and that results and facts matter across the board. Y'all know I got to share some biblical soul food. So John 7 verse 24 says, do not judge by mere appearances, but judge with right judgment. Judge in truth based on reality, what the Bible says, the one truth, the moral standard that you got, the, the idea of right and wrong. It all comes from God almighty. We aren't chemical soup. We aren't stardust. No uh, explanation of evolution can ever explain where our moral standard comes from because it came from God. He created all things. This world as a whole, they need to put their hope in God and look up. Stop looking at this world. Stop looking at just at, at mere appearances because he is the only one that we can all trust and nothing else, not artificial intelligence, nothing but turning your heart, repenting and putting your heart and soul into the Lord and savior can solve all these things. That's the solution. That's how we fix this problem forever. That's all I got for today though. Y'all let me know what you think down below in the comments section. Let's keep this conversation rolling. God bless everybody in this video. I'll be praying for them, for you, for this entire world. And shout out to Dr. Phil for giving them this platform. I know Candace Owens always has already has a huge platform, but Dr. Phil allowing them to come on to his show mm -hmm. with his large audience and, and just, you know, engage in, in mostly civil discourse and share ideas. So other people who may not have thought about it outside of the woke sphere, that bubble that they're living in, uh, they can actually see what reality and common sense looks like. So thank you for Dr. Phil allowing that to happen. Uh, outside of that, if you like what I'm doing over here, you got some value from this video, some laughs or whatever y'all showed up for. Don't forget to smash that like button. Subscribe if you're not already. Ring the notification bell so you can get notified anytime I post a video. If you want to show some love to the channel, show some extra extra support. You can always get awesome designs like this. Sun's out, guns out. Made by my lovely wife over in her Etsy store. She's got a bunch of Christian American designs. She also has insulated tumblers as well, like this one right here that you see. Sizes range from petite, tee, small to big, big, and hefty for the clothing. So go check that out. All my links are in the description as always. Big love and, and thanks and gratefulness out to my Patreon and Buy Me A Coffee members. Y'all just showing up, putting money behind me and, and donating to, to my ministry and my, my channel and allowing me to do what I do. I love y'all so much. I'm so thankful. Whether you can donate or not, I'm still thankful for you just showing up and, and watching me each and every day. But y'all take it the extra mile and I just can't put into words how awesome it is to have your, your support back in my channel and my family and I support, er, we're appreciative very much so. Uh, but I'm gonna stop ranting. Y'all know I can get long-winded. Until next time, Godspeed. I'm gone. Whoa. That was a lot. The woke professor. <laughs>
like they kept asking this guy questions and he couldn't even go straight to the point it was just like dodging 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 <laughs> like a simple yes or no a simple yes or no is this right or wrong it is just crazy it was literally just avoiding the whole question and stuff dr phil is amazing for even inviting them over to his show oh my goodness our time is fast spent what do you guys think about this video drop a comment down below if you enjoyed this video give it a huge thumbs up and please share this video and if you're new here join viewer city hit the subscribe button below turn on the post notification bell so that you can always be the first person to know whenever a new video drops and that's guys i'll see you in my next one stay safe bye